Hello everyone. Welcome to Pathology Riddles. Today we will be dealing with a few questions about cell injury. So the question number one, what is the difference between reversible and irreversible injury? So reversible injury is derangement of function and morphology of the injured cell which can come back to normal if the stimulus is removed. So the damaging stimulus, if it is being removed, then the cell will come back to the normal morphology. In cases of irreversible injury, the derangement of function and morphology of the injured cell will not come back to normal even if the damaging stimulus is removed. Now the mechanism of reversible injury, there is failure of energy dependent ion pump. So there is an ion pump which utilizes ATP to maintain an ionic balance between the outside and the inside of the cell. So, because of the failure of this ion pump, there will be inability to maintain this ionic balance and in consequence, the fluid homeostasis also will be affected. In cases of irreversible injury, the mechanism is inability to restore mitochondrial function. So, mitochondria is a very important organelle which will uh, give energy to the cell and which will help in the cell to maintain its homeostasis. So if there is inability to maintain this uh, mitochondrial function, then it is irreversible injury. Then there will be loss of structure and function of plasma membrane and intracellular membranes. Now the plasma membrane is protecting the cell from the outside environment while the intracellular membranes like the one around uh, any of the organ lay. Okay, so these if they are disrupted then the cell is irreversibly injured. Then there is loss of DNA and chromatin structural integrity. So DNA is very important for protein synthesis. If it is disrupted, it is uh, destroyed then protein synthesis is affected. So it will leads to irreversible injury. Grossly, in cases of reversible injury, there will be pallor, turgor, that is rigidity, and increased organ weight because the cell has the inability to maintain that fluid homeostasis. Now, in cases of irreversible injury, there will be pallor and the organ will become soft and friable because the cell integrity is lost. So, it uh, does not adhere to the other cells so becomes friable the tissue becomes friable it is easily breaking off in microscopy in reversible injury the cell size will be increased as I told fluid homeostasis is affected so it will increase in size because more and more fluid is being accumulated inside the cell and cell membrane will start showing some kind of blebs in cases of irreversible injury Cell size may be increased, may be decreased, but cell membrane is disrupted and fragmented. Okay, the integrity of cell membrane is lost. Now, endoplasmic reticulum and mitochondria will show swelling in cases of irreversible injury. Again, due to fluid homeostasis disruption. In cases of irreversible injury, the membrane of this mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum will be disrupted. Now nucleus. In cases of reversible injury, there will be clumped chromatin. Okay, but in cases of irreversible injury, it will show pycnosis, karyorexis, and karyolysis. Now, what is pycnosis? Pycnosis does uh, this chromatin becomes very very clumped, like a small dot. Okay, in karyorexis, all this uh, uh, nucleus will be fragmented. Whereas in cases of karyolysis, the nucleus is almost dissolved. So you can't even make out the nucleus. So examples of reversible injury are fatty change in cases of alcohol liver disease. In cases of alcoholic liver disease, uh, there will be fatty change in the liver. So if uh, the patient uh, stops having alcohol, consuming alcohol, then this fatty change can come back to normal. So the hepatocytes may become normal if uh, alcohol is not consumed anymore. 
in cases of irreversible injury there the examples are acute tubular necrosis so in these cases the changes will not be reversible coming to question 2 what are myelin figures so myelin figures are phospholipids which are collected in a place these are derived from all the damaged cell membranes so cell membranes have this phospholipids once they are damaged they are collected in one place and because they resemble the myelin sheath of nerve that is why they they are called myelin figures to define apoptosis so apoptosis is a programmed or timed cell death the cell itself activates the enzymes which are going to degrade the cell's own dna nuclear and cytoplasmic proteins so what is the intrinsic mechanism of apoptosis intrinsic pathway is also known as mitochondrial pathway. so it has two phases first is initiation phase and second is execution phase so in initiation phase as the name suggests apoptotic enzymes are activated and in execution phase these activated enzymes will cause cell death so what are the conditions which triggers apoptosis it can be withdrawal of growth factors and hormones then there can be some external stimulus like toxins uh, dna damage because of uh, uv light and etc or protein misfoldings which happens in few of the diseases so these all can cause apoptosis now uh, the most important thing in apoptosis is cytochrome c now cytochrome c is usually found between the cell uh, this mitochondrial membranes it is not in normal condition found in cell uh, this cytoplasm so uh, this membrane permeability of mitochondrial membranes where the cytochrome c is is controlled by anti apoptotic proteins like bcl2 bcl xl which prevents the action of pro apoptotic proteins so when cell is injured and this bh3 sensors sense this cell is injured so they activate this pro apoptotic proteins which are backs bad and these suppress the action of these anti apoptotic proteins which we have discussed earlier those bcl2 and bcl xl now this will lead to opening of mitochondrial membrane so as cytochrome c is in between those mitochondrial membrane the cytochrome c will come into the cytoplasm so cytochrome c then goes and combines with this apaf which will then in turn activate caspase 9 which again will activate the executioner caspases so this was the initiation phase from cell injury to activation of executioner caspases by caspase 9 then execution phase it is mediated by this caspase 3 and caspase 6 they break down the cytoskeleton protein and nuclear matrix protein that results in breaking of the nucleus so what exactly is the difference between apoptosis and necrosis which is our next question so apoptosis as we discussed earlier is a programmed death programmed cell death or timed cell death necrosis is not programmed in apoptosis uh, single or a few cells may be affected in necrosis a bunch of cells group of cells may be affected then in cases of apoptosis the cell size will enlarge in cases of necrosis the cell size will usually shrink it might enlarge also but usually it shrinks stimuli in apoptosis is maybe external or internal but in cases of necrosis is it it is predominantly external stimulus which causes necrosis now apoptosis cause may be predominantly physiological but few pathological causes are also there in cases of necrosis predominant cause is pathological now coming to morphology of the cell in apoptosis and necrosis 
the plasma membrane very significantly is maintained or intact in cases of apoptosis but in cases of necrosis it is disrupted now nucleus they may be fragmented into nucleosomes sized fragments okay small small fag fragments will be there which are called nucleosome size now necrosis there will be pycnosis karyorexis and karyolysis as discussed earlier pycnosis the nucleus will become very small like a ink dot then karyorexis the nucleus will get fragmented broken off into multiple pieces in karyolysis that nucleus itself gets dissolved now apoptosis the cellular content is released into apoptotic bodies now apoptotic bodies have a membrane okay so they are released into uh, they basically divide into uh, multiple fragments which are surrounded by membrane but in cases of necrosis uh, this is the cellular content is leaked into the surrounding areas so because apoptosis has this multiple membrane bound fragments so there is no inflammation in this but in necrosis all the cellular contents are outside so inflammation is there present now examples of apoptosis the endometrial shedding which happens during menstrual cycle in females uh, in cases of uh, necrosis the example is uh, very famous caseous necrosis in cases of tuberculosis So what are the types of necrosis first type is coagulative necrosis in which case the cell injury denatures the structure of the cell and proteins and cells own enzyme start digesting it so there is breakdown of injured cell components but it does not occur immediately it remains for a few days to weeks and the dead cell components are removed by leukocyte lysosomal enzymes so there is inflammatory cells which will come and eat up the dead cell components so the example is ischemia of any organ due to obstruction of vessels supplying to it be it kidney liver spleen whenever there is disruption of blood supply to these organs there will be coagulative necrosis now coming to liquefactive necrosis liquefactive as the name suggests uh the it will become like a liquid so cell injury denatures the cell structural protein but does not denature cells own enzyme so the breakdown of these injured cells will happen by its own enzymes previously the injured cells uh, the breakdown of those components were happening by uh, wbc's lysosomal component in this case is in liquefactive necrosis it will happen by its own enzymes so the enzymes will transform the tissue into a viscous mass so the example so as uh, people start saying you have liquefied my brain so central nervous system is a good example of liquefactive necrosis and some of the bacterial infections also cause liquefactive necrosis now gangrenous necrosis gangrenous necrosis is basically combination of two types of necrosis one is coagulative and another is liquefactive so when it, it is used us usually in cases of uh, limb when the limb loses its nerves uh, this blood supply then it undergoes coagulative necrosis plus if there is a superimposed bacterial infection over this then liquefactive necrosis is also now caseous necrosis caseous necrosis is caused by mycobacterium so the mycobacterial cell wall releases mycolic acid which is a lipid constituent and gives a cheese like appearance so it happens in cases of tuberculosis now coming to fat necrosis so there are focal areas of fat destruction by enzymes which are lipases so fat is destroyed by lipases now examples are pancreas or breast so in cases of acute pancreatitis there will be 
fat necrosis, they will have this chalky white appearance grossly. So fibrinoid necrosis, the sixth one is fibrinoid necrosis. Mechanism is antigen antibody complexes are deposited on the wall of arteries. So fibrinoid necrosis usually happens in the blood vessels. So examples are polyarthritis nodosa, severe hypertension and immune mediated vasculitis.